All right. For today's Critical Thought, we're going to be talking about the importance of project management when it comes to video games. I know it's a very exciting topic for everyone involved, but that's one of the reasons why we need to talk about it. When it comes to pretty much any game development project, be it from an independent side or AAA, poor project management can be the unseen killer behind the scenes. And many people, especially first time, or I'm sorry, first timers, tend to undervalue the importance of being able to manage a design or even just a group of people. And there are several interesting philosophies and theories why and how they relate to making a video game. So the first part is from someone going from the AAA or AA space to running their own small indie company. One of the major differences between AAA development and indie is the size of the team involved. When you're on a team of 50, 60 plus people working on a game, everyone is essentially a cog in that machine. And unless you are a project lead or department head, you're not really caring about what's going on somewhere else. If you were hired to do art for the game, you don't really, or you're not really going to be managing the programmers or the composers or the designers and so on. But in the independent side, there is no person over you. There is no manager or shareholder saying you must get this done by so and so. And that's one of the major reasons why independent development has become so popular and alluring for developers. But when you don't have that person over your head, it's very easy to take a lax approach when it comes to managing people. It's kind of like if developing the game is like being a rock star on stage, the project management side is essentially being a roadie. And not too many rock stars like to be roadies, as we've seen in the past. And that's the thing about project management when it comes to game design. This is the busy work. This is the managerial work. This is the stuff you're doing behind the scenes to keep things going. You're not really working on your game at this point. And that's one of the major reasons why a lot of independent developers sometimes tend to uh, throw up their nose at the throat thought of project management. It's the ever popular idea of, I just want to make a game. I don't care about anything else. I just want to, you know, stare at my computer screen for the next uh, 9 to 12 months, maybe more, get this game out. Who cares about everybody else, PR, social media, anything like that. But as we've seen before, that is a very dangerous attitude to have. And this next part, I'm sure for any indie developers, or even just anyone who's working on a game, will probably attest to. Building a game is different than designing it. And many developers will focus on the design. It's the fun part of the game. You are building a unique game system. You're testing it. But when it comes to actually taking this game from your head and putting it to computer, that is a different story. And where a lot of the issues with project management when it comes to video game design come into play. As we've said many times over, video games aren't built on a set checklist. This isn't the same as a house or a car or any project that you know when it's over. We know when a house is done when every room is finished. We know when a car is done when you can actually drive it off the lot. But how do you know when a game is done? Even if you have a 10 point plan for the next year and a half to two, that doesn't mean that's going to stay the same from day one to day who knows when the game is done. There are a lot of unforeseen and sometimes seen issues that can crop up during a game's development. Again, when you are thinking about a game in your head, everything works. There are no bugs, there is no compatibility issues, you don't have to worry about UI design. But once you start putting that to code, things can pop up. And this is especially true if you're work or excuse me, especially true if you're working on a unique project. Again, some of the most innovative and great indie games have been 100 percent unique from each other. Stuff like Renowned Explorers, Undertale of Snake Pass, and again, many, many more indie games than I've probably forgotten by now. But the point is, 
each one of those games had a different de development path. No two games are developed the same. And what's very important about that is that it also means just because you've created one game or seen through one project, that doesn't magically make the next project or the project after that easier or more streamlined. It helps out a lot for sure, but again, just because you've had one major success under your belt doesn't basically give you a get out of project management card for the rest of your life. And this is where things get very dangerous. But we'll talk about that in a minute. Now another reason why project management is considered snub by a lot of first time developers is that this is the business side of creating a video game. As we've said before, many people view the artists and the businessmen as two separate entities when it comes to creating a video game. And this is where kind of the, you know, video games as art or, you know, like the hippie kind of viewpoint comes into play. In the sense that we don't want to manage our game, we don't want to restrict creative freedom, or we want everyone to be free to do whatever they want. And while that is certainly a great attitude to be had, it doesn't help when you are going through hundreds of thousands of dollars, or for smaller cases, tens of thousands of dollars, to create a video game. And I've had my chance to work on smaller teams. Ooh, my ears just popped. Sorry about that. Uh, I've had my chance to work with smaller groups around here, and they have all fallen apart, really because of the fact that no one really wanted to step up and be the head. Everyone was kind of left to their own devices. And while that is great for freedom, limitations are a very important part of being able to focus your work. And that's where project management comes into play. Because this is when things get real. It's no longer about you saying, oh, I'm going to program this entire game in five months. And uh, my friend over here, he'll do all the art in five to eight weeks. No, when it comes to project management, this is when you actually set deadlines. You sit down and say, okay, if it takes me, I don't know, two months to design a level and... I have six levels, then it's going to take me at minimum one year to do this project. But then there's of course the unforeseen incidents. What if someone falls behind on their work? What if something doesn't work and it pushes everything back? Being able to plan ahead and have a pretty good idea of what everyone is doing and what the progress of your game is can do a lot to help mitigate these risks and challenges. And Again, it's not, even though it's not the most, you know, rock and roll or most exciting part of making a game, it's still required. And to prove my point, I have two good examples to talk about. One is kind of the inspiration for today's piece. Now, I hate to do this one because I actually know the guy here. We've talked several times on podcasts, but it's one of those cases where it's important to hear the nightmare stories because it's the only way we'll learn. And that is John Schaefer. As you may or may not know, John Schaefer was the lead designer on Sid Meier Civilization V. And following the success of that game, he left for Axis to start his own studio, Conifer Games. And he went to Kickstarter to pitch his own dream strategy game, At the Gates. A kind of combination of Civilization with even bits and pieces of King of Dragon Pass. It sounded very innovative and all very interesting to play. I've spoken with John several times in like two to three hour podcasts, and it sounded like he had a very good idea of what the game was and what he wanted it to be. And again, as someone who worked on the full finished project of Civilization V, he had a lot of clout build up with fans and Kickstarter backers. But guess what happened? It is 2017, obviously, right now, and the game is not even out of alpha. The, it was originally supposed to be done in 2014, and many issues rear their head, a lot of which we don't know, you know, outside of John. But he made posts about suffering, or su sorry, suffering health issues, kind of breaking down, I think even selling his house at one point to try and get the game funded. And right now, he decided to take a job at Parox Interactive to basically pay the bills and hope to finish at the gates at some point. 
and even then with updates he made earlier in 2017, he's disappeared since then. And there are a lot of people basically calling for his head on a uh, pike at the moment because of it. And again, this is one of those cases where just because you worked on a great game or you are an amazing designer, that doesn't replace project management skills or even just simply managing other people. That's another major point about project management, why a lot of developers or first-time developers have trouble with it, is that it basically makes you the boss. It's no longer about you having fun with your friends and you know working on stuff in your spare time. You actually have to tell people, sometimes your closest friends, you got to get to work. Or this isn't good enough, you have to go do it again. And a lot of people, including myself, have trouble being, you know, that kind of, you know, I'm in charge, you know, listen, do what I say. But it's got to get done. And the more people you have working on a project, the more balls you have to juggle. When I spoke with my friend uh, Trayvon Taylor, who's working on Bullock at the moment, on an upcoming podcast, we talked about some of the... Uh, challenges of running or managing multiple people and he told me that he would never want to run a project with more than I think like 25 people because again the more people under your belt the more headaches that are involved with it and it's one of those same things when it comes to game development just because you throw more people and more money and more time at a project it doesn't automatically make it a better game Unless you understand design and being able to organize and manage a group of people, that project is going to falter. And the final example, and this will be a quick one because I want to spend an actual critical thought talking about them more in depth, is Prison Architect from Introversion. Introversion had probably one of the most solid game plans out of anyone I saw on Early Access. And what they did in terms of organizing and basically going through the entire or from you know pre-early access through it to release has basically become the benchmark that almost every other early access developer is now being judged on. But again, I could spend another 10-15 minutes on uh, Prison Architect, but we'll come back to that in a future piece. But to wrap up today's topic, when it comes to creating a video game, there are a lot of disciplines that are required. And go and this goes just beyond programming, art, and design. Having someone who can manage a group of people, keep everybody on task, is critical. And it becomes all the more so as you add more people. But even then, one to two man groups can also run to this problem. When you don't have a boss over your shoulders, it's very easy to become complacent. One of the best parts about you know working freelance or being your own boss is you can do whatever you want. If you want to take a 20 minute break whenever you see fit, you can do that. And there's no problem with that. But then if 20 minutes becomes a two month break or a two year break, you can see where these issues come in. I mean, even with myself with Game Wisdom, I am putting out videos on a daily basis. I'm thinking of posts and these videos and podcasts to do. And even I still feel like there are some days that I could have done more in that day. And when you are alone like this, it's very easy to get that complacent attitude of just sitting around and waiting for things to happen. But you can't do that. And as one final example I just wanted to bring up, and this is another one of those cases and points about why just because you've made a successful game doesn't erase these issues or challenges. Uh, Jake Burkett of Grey Alien Games has been working on the game Shadowhand for I think it's been a better part of a year and a half, two years now. And he's constantly said that the game is coming out soon, it's coming out soon, and then he's finding more and more things to add and grow the project. But he is now almost, I think, 20 years a veteran of the game industry. So, if anyone knows about the ins and outs of making a game, it would be him. And even he's having trouble keeping to his own deadlines. And again, being able to properly measure out the amount of work and money that goes into a game is a difficult task. And in some cases, it could be impossible because you don't know. Again, when it comes to a hard skill or hard work, it's a little bit easier to say. How long does it take you to sketch a character on pen and paper? How long does it take you to, let's say, code, 
I don't know a program. Because they're hard skills, it's a lot easier to manage. But how long does it take to balance a combat system? How long does it take to make sure that your control scheme and UI are right? I'm, sure, I'm not sure if you just heard that car being out my window. But when it comes to developing a game, there are a lot of soft skills that aren't as easy to qualify compared to other markets. But if we start talking about that again, this could become a 40 to 15 minute video like it's nothing. So let's wrap it up here. For those of you watching this, whether you are an indie developer or someone who has worked in like a business or group setting, how important was project management to you and what you've done? There's even the greater topic about different manager or uh, manager styles or working with group projects, but that's again beyond the scope of today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you have a suggestion for a future, excuse me, a future topic, please let me know. But thank you so much for watching. If you're new, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. For my writings as well as weekly podcasts, check out game-wisdom.com. For ways of supporting Game Wisdom and get access to rewards such as VIP status, as well as voting for the Saturday Night Grab Bag, check out patreon.com slash gwbicer. You can follow me on Twitter at gwbicer for my daily thoughts as well as updates as to what's going on. So thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out our next video coming real soon to the channel.